Hello and welcome to another interesting episode of the Grace Rain Podcast. I'm excited to have you with me here. Uh, we're about to dive into some interesting stuff today. The um, the world is wondering where it's all going to go, and you're listening to the Grace Rain Podcast with Gannon. And you're going to be thinking that I'm a nut when we're done. (laughs) Probably. I hope not. All I really intend to do... And... All I've ever really intended to do with this podcast is get down to the nitty gritty. Get past the crap. Get past the trash and get to the to the real stuff, the good stuff. Really the good stuff. It really is the good stuff. I mean, it's questions that you and I are both wondering. We're both wondering. Everybody's wondering. What what does this all look like at the end of this tunnel? Where does it all where does it all end? But we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And there's a few items that I want to go over with you really quick. And then I want to get down to the real, the real agenda of this podcast. And I want you just to stick around and think about, I want you to really use your brain, really think, consider these things. If you're a believer, if you're not a believer, and when I say a believer, one who's called on the name of the Lord Jesus and believes really soaked in. Look, there's a conspiracy going on. There's a wild, wide-eyed, and bushy-tailed conspiracy. We're staring straight down the double barrel of a worldwide um, takeover. That's what I suspect is going on. In fact, I know that's what's going on. Why? Because I know for a fact that we fight not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. There is spiritual wickedness afoot. And it's getting wild. You already know this. Come on. Give me a break. To be honest with you, though, I, I can I can tell you this right now. Here's the, here's the facts. Yesterday, there was a lot of news this, this past weekend. A lot of news. A lot of, lot of developing things happening. But let's just get on. Let's just get on down. Let's just go ahead and get to the point here. Because you need to, you, you, you probably aren't aware. You might be aware. You might be aware. Current total confirmed cases of the coronavirus now has surpassed 1.3 million worldwide cases with, we may as well just 74,000 deaths. 1.3 million cases pushing 1.4, 74,000 deaths in now 184 countries and regions of the world. The U.S. stands... Um, Sitting, sitting not well with three hundred and tragically three hundred and fifty-seven thousand cases, just under three hundred and fifty-seven thousand. But three, we'll go ahead and say three hundred and fifty-seven thousand cases. But like I like to say, may God be true and every man a liar. I think there's a there's I think there's a something going on here. There's something strange going on. Something real weird is going on. Here's what I know: Satan hates you. He hates you. Why? Because you're made in the image of God. Of course he hates you. He hates creation. He wants to destroy God's creation and build it back up into his own uh, image. Make it the way he wants it. Dark, secluded, destroyed, artificially made. He wants artificial intelligence because he doesn't have the power like God does to speak things into existence. Spain sitting at 135,000 cases, Italy with 132,000 cases, and Germany at 101,000 cases. In the United States, there are 356,000, 357,000 cases. New York leading the pack with 130,000 cases. That's an epicenter if I haven't ever seen one. If I haven't seen one, I am in Ohio right now, and we are sitting at a nearly whopping 4,500 cases and 142 deaths. Tragically, 142 souls. Um, are not here with us anymore. Take a listen to what's going on here. The Prime Minister in 
Great Britain now uh, is is showing terrible signs. Uh, he's in isolation. Take a listen. Tonight, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson hospitalized with COVID-19. 10 Downing Street saying in a statement, this is a precautionary step as the Prime Minister continues to have persistent symptoms of coronavirus. I've developed mild symptoms. He tested positive on March 27th, becoming the first world leader to do so. Alas, I still have uh, one of the symptoms. And on Friday, body. reported still a having a fever. So He's been updating the nation right. on social media while still working from home. His pregnant fiance, now in isolation, also showing symptoms. The news breaking just an hour after the Queen gave a rare special address to the nation. At 93 years old, the picture of strength. Together we are tackling this disease. A deeply personal message, a wartime rallying cry as her own son, her heir, Prince Charles, recovers from COVID-19. The Queen has given this kind of unplanned address just four times before. At the onset of the first Gulf War. As your Queen and as a grandmother. When Princess Diana died. My heart. When her mother, the Queen Mum, passed away and at her Diamond Jubilee. The Queen is not at home at Buckingham Palace. She's speaking tonight from Windsor Castle, where she and her 98-year-old husband, Prince Philip, both very much in that more vulnerable age category, have been self-isolating. But the head of state who has seen and survived so much in her 68 year reign. So there you go. You know, it's just uh, we should take comfort. It's, it's just a lot to con- it's, it's, it's a lot to look at. It really is. But, you know, I encourage you because um, um, I encourage you because we are children of Almighty God. If you've called on the name of Almighty God, believed on the name of Jesus Christ that in his finished work, not works, his work. His work, his resume, his finished work. The grave is empty, folks. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been taken to the intensive care unit in the St. Thomas Hospital in London. And and this is because of the, uh, like, uh, you know, you just heard in that report, the increasingly severe coronavirus symptoms that he has. Last Friday, he was still showing signs, just terrible signs. And, uh, you know, it, it, you know, the backdrop is Johnson was admitted to the hospital on Sunday. That was yesterday for what Downing Street called, quote, routine tests. Um, I don't see what's so routine about that, honestly. This is coronavirus. There's nothing routine about it. This is out of this world. It's called the novel coronavirus because it's new. So it's new. And so... Johnson remains conscious at this time, and um, he's now in in ICU uh, as a precaution in case a ventilator is needed. Um, and that, of course, is according to the Downey, Downing Street. So that's on them. Johnson actually is 55 years old, so he's right on that threshold where they're saying, reportedly, you're, you know, it's not looking good for folks. <clears throat> um, it's not looking good, but you know, he continues to still lead the government. Um, in uh, being prime minister in Great Britain, you know, he's still leading the government and um, uh, 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 he's still holding meetings and briefings via video conference. And so that might not be that important to you, but that's another soul. And that's the, he is actually the first world leader now with coronavirus. Actually, I feel like, I feel like the prime minister of Canada, um, uh, I feel like he was isolated for a minute. Uh, uh, Justin Trudeau, if that's, uh, I feel like he had, I feel like him and his wife isolate. See, you know, it, it, here's something I really don't like about coronavirus is this weird feeling people get about it. You know, like it's like they, sh- it's a shaming thing. Like, oh, you know, you have, it's a, you know, and they're not, they're afraid to come out with it. Listen, if you're having problems and you're dealing with it and um, you're having some symptoms, uh, don't be ashamed. You did nothing wrong. Uh, as far as I can tell, right? You know, you, 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 you know, we're all, we're, we're all getting through this together. We're all going to fight the good fight. And I pray that you believe, uh, on the, on the finished work of almighty God, Jesus Christ. Um, and you pray without ceasing, pray for your loved ones because we're all really suffering through this together. Uh, and we all want it to end as quickly as it possibly can. And, um, um, if you missed it yesterday, the uh, uh, the Surgeon General uh, showed up on Fox News and 
discussed and kind of gave us a kind of a, a really strange message um, saying that this might very well be our Pearl Harbor week uh, or a couple of weeks. Um, and that's a little disconcerting. Take a listen to this. Well, it's tragically fitting that we're talking at the beginning of Holy Week because this is going to be the hardest and the saddest week of most Americans' lives, quite frankly. This is going to be our Pearl Harbor moment, our 9-11 moment, only it's not going to be localized. It's going to be happening all over the country. And I want America to understand that. But I also want them to understand that the public along with the state and the federal government, have the power to change the trajectory of this epidemic. You mentioned Italy and Spain. Now, they had a very, very hard time, and they're still having a hard time, but they seem to have reached their peak and are coming back down on the other side. And you say weeks, months behind. I would actually push back a little bit. When you look at their trajectory, from about uh, a month ago is when they really started to lean into... So there you go. You know, it's um, he's calling it the Pearl Harbor of, you know, for us. And they, look, it's already, it's been a Pearl harbor since china folks this is a this is a global pearl harbor we're fighting we're fighting an invisible enemy um i'm not sure what to what to say about it but here's what i here, here here's what i here's what I, i'm pretty sure is going on here and i i can pretty much rest my head you know i can pretty much close my eyes tonight and have some peace of mind over this okay i know that satan is probably behind uh the driving force uh, of world governments. Can we agree on that? I think he hates mankind. And um, because we're made in his image, in God's image, and he hates mankind, and he's finding a way to take over. And I suspect he's not going to let this crisis go to waste. Whether you are wondering if Satan is real, or you are a believing Christian, considering how Satan may be deceiving you, it is important to go to the source of all truth about uh, this wicked one, Satan, the Bible. And I would say go straight to the Bible if you want to know more about him and, and his, his deceptive means and, and, and ways. God's word describes to us in detail who Satan really is, his nature, his acts, and, of course, the end result for him, of course, his future. So that makes me feel better knowing that. Because it does. It describes to us exactly where he ends up, the dragon, that old serpent. And, and um, But he's not going to let this crisis go to waste. But I want you to remember that he is only here looking to reap or uh, wreak havoc and steal, kill and destroy. His mission is to supersede God or to be like God, which of course we know will never happen. We are certainly living in a strange time. These are strange times uh, you know, where we hear one thing here and another thing over there as far as news and media are concerned. But one thing always remains the same. May God be true and every man a liar. So what do we make of this pandemic? What are we to make of this pandemic? Is this just another plot by the enemy himself? Finding a way to supersede God's control? Because the Bible says that he, this wicked one, is the little g God of this world. This thing is, so the powers of this world sit on his lap. And he's controlling and pulling triggers and, you know, pulling strings and making things happen. I suspect he will certainly find a way uh, of, of making use of this crisis and uh, these trying times that we're all in. In order to answer... What kind of use, you know, in order to answer that kind of question about what he might attempt to do or is in the process of doing, we have to understand his nature and what he stands for and what he is likely to try to make happen. The good news is God's word tells us exactly how this is probably going to play out. And I shouldn't say probably because it tells us whoom, what, what, what all the, the here's the big steps, folks. Here's the big steps. OK, Second Thessalonians. A big, great falling away. He comes out and shows his ugly face. The enemy, the Antichrist, shows his ugly face. Everybody, you know, looking forward to that. We're just not. But I want to share with you, if you know how he behaves, what he wants, how what he likes, because the Bible describes his behavior. So if his if his goal is to steal, kill, and destroy, 
You can imagine that he is certainly stealing, killing, and destroying during these trying times. He's making use of this horrible crisis. Now, I want you to I want to say, firstly, we know that he hates God and everything that God is affiliated with, including his creation. Because this wicked one hates God's creation. That means he hates you. And because he hates so much, because his hate is so poisonous, as you could, as you could, as you could possibly imagine towards you, he'll do everything in his power to destroy you as well. Why? Because, like I said earlier, you are made in God's image. God sent his only begotten son to lay down his own life so that you could escape the judgment that we are all really appointed to. Fire. But we, but we escape that. Who can bring a charge against God's elect? The Bible says that for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I came across an interview brought to you by the London Reel, and I think it will help put things into perspective. What do we do right now? What does the average citizen do who's watching this right now or who thinks something's funny is going on? I mean, look, I'm walking around London right now and there's nobody here. No. I had an entire tube train to myself on the way in. Mm-hmm. I've been coming to work. I've been going to the gym. I've been shaking hands. I don't see why troops need to be in this city because no one's going out. No one's gathering in groups. Everyone's staying at home. What are troops going to do? Are they going to make it 1% less uh, social distance? It doesn't make sense they're doing this here or in New York City or anywhere else. What is it doing? Setting a precedent. It's setting a precedent. And getting me used to having military around and getting me more scared and trusting the process more. It doesn't make sense. And I, I agree that I don't know everything, but there's been some things here, David, and I put out some videos about them, and I'm not the dumbest guy in the room I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but something, some things don't make sense to me. No, and, and the reason they don't make sense is, is it's, it's all a scam to create an outcome. Uh, I, I came over here um, from Waterloo Station today uh, uh, in a cab, and that guy was telling me he had sat in the line today for four hours before I turned up. Well, it's not a scam. Let, this is as real as you and but let's take, take a listen. And how are people going to survive? How are they going to do it? And when you are in desperate straits, then you will accept things changing if you are persuaded to believe that they will improve your desperate straits, i.e. we need a whole new economic uh, uh, system. Tell you something else. As AI takes over more and more jobs on top of all these lost employment that's happening now around the world um, the question is raised so how are people going to live and what's being suggested is a guaranteed income which I mean I, I believe since I was a kid that in any civilized society there should not there should be a level below which people should not fall there should be a level i think it's higher than it and i absolutely absolutely think it's higher than it than it is so i i um on that basis would say well yeah a guaranteed income not not a guaranteed outcome because that's just a race to the bottom and everything will fall apart without incentive not a guaranteed outcome, but a guaranteed income, so you can't fall below a certain level. But that's not what this is about. It's about taking away all the job opportunities through AI and things that are happening now, saying, oh, well, we're now, we're now going to give you a guaranteed income. Oh, well, yeah, it's going to be very small, and it's going to be so small that you will be permanently in the bottom levels of the Hunger Games society. Oh, and by the way, and this is the key, oh, by the way, 
thinking of the social credit system in China, you only get the income if you live your life as we say you should live your life. That's the key. So what you're now getting, and again, you know, every, every box is ticked. You're now saying, well, we're going to give some money out to people uh, because of this, these desperate straits they're in. And you're starting to set the precedent to get it. It's all psychological, step by step, totalitarian tiptoe. You're starting this, this perception of the, moving towards this guaranteed income, which will be guaranteed control. Uh, they, they announced yesterday, British government, three hundred and thirty billion pounds. A chunk of that is these loans to these yeah. small businesses, very small, even like three thousand pounds or here and there. They're going to do the same in the states, I'm sure. Yeah. Again, and it seemed weird to me. I get the government loaning me this money or giving me this money. It's a form of control. It's absolutely a form of control, and also because the, if the economic system is shite anyway, it's, it's loans. It's not going to last. It's loans. Yeah. So you have to pay them back. Right. And if, <laughs> and, and if your indebted. business is destroyed, what are you going to pay them back with? Yeah. Yeah. We are, we are watching the un- global unfolding of exactly what I've been writing about for 30 years. You know, I, I, and I look around and it's like, you know, pinch myself. Oh, ouch, it's true. This is, this is, this is what's happening now. Interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. That's a, that is a London real interview with David Icke, which you might like or you might hate, or he has some interesting insights in these things and whatnot, but I want to, I want to tell you, He has it right. I'm going to tell you right now. He hit the nail right on the head. Because the Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. So then what is this? This socialized way of handing out cash for folks um, as long as you adhere to what we want you to do. What we say. Benjamin Netanyahu and Bill Gates um, and a whole host of other billionaires and folks are are floating the idea of finding a way to track everyone who has coronavirus, to track them with their cell phones right now. But I imagine, I mean, and I just I saw an article the other day, Benjamin Netanyahu, that's the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, Bibi Netanyahu in Israel, Prime Minister, in an article had stated that he was... Not total, not against uh, putting a cuff over, you know, folks wearing a cuff over their feet or their, their leg or their, around their wrist or something that, something that would identify that they have, uh, that they are, might still be carriers of the coronavirus. These are folks who've been tested, confirmed, have it, and may have recovered. And if they haven't recovered, you get, you get a cuff anyway. And this way we know where you are. And if you break your, if you break your, uh, the law and you decide to go out, out of quarantine, you can be arrested, go to prison. So they're literally breaking into your constitutional rights. Well, I don't know about Israel because I'm not sure what they're, what they, uh, they're a democracy, I, something, something of the sort. But, um, this is getting really, really touchy. It's getting very, very touchy. Now, David, I don't agree with one item that he said that he thinks it's a scam. This is all a big bunch of scam artists trying to find a way to make a mountain over uh, over a molehill. Like any sickness, just call it COVID-19. If they die COVID-19, get everybody freaked out. This is He died from COVID-19 when it was just totally normal death from the flu. 60,000 people in the United States a year die from the flu, and they just mark it up, mark it up. Chalk it up to COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen. Now, now I don't. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I really think there is a serious illness coming uh, on the planet, on the globe, that is here already. This this virus, and whatever you want to call it, COVID, Corona, the thing, the virus. 
uh, the, whatever, you know, it is still, I believe going is being used by the enemy and those spiritual things in high places, those powers and principalities using it to their advantage. Just, it's a scare tactic to destroy God's creation, God's holy creation, to put us in, under bondage and slavery to the machine. And you might be thinking to yourself, Gannon, you have lost your marbles. No, you see, it's taken, it's taken this long. For all the for the for the millennia and millennia of all these folks putting trying to trying to float ideas, I mean, it was it was they weren't close enough to be able to put the put the thing together in the 1500s, in the 1800s. These end times folks, these theologians weren't close enough. They weren't able. They were like, oh, you know, World War II, it's the it's the apo- depression, it's the apocalypse, you know, these things, you know, Vietnam, it's the apocalypse, you know. Uh, the Holocaust is the apocalypse, these things. And so they, they weren't close like we are now to be able to take all these things floating around in the ether and be able to go ahead and try to line them up. You get pretty close. You get pretty close to artificial intelligence. You get pretty close to microchipping now. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thunk that? Exactly. That's why we're at where we're at now and have a better picture. It's starting to come through. It's starting to come in. Okay, I see what this mark is. In Revelation, the word mark means etching. To be etched into the skin. Um, To be etched into the skin. Um, And so, uh, you know, uh, not on, in. And so... uh, Something strange is going on here, folks. And I'm glad I actually sent you that interview, let you look at that interview, because it's important to, it's important to know, you need to know what, you know, because we can focus on what it, what it is right now, and we can do that until, you know, we're, we, you know, but I think it's time for us to look ahead at the, look ahead at the, of the train a little bit, look ahead of the cart and see, well, where is this headed? Because you can, you're allowed to do that. You can look ahead. You can see. You look ahead when you drive. You look ahead when you plan. You look ahead when you go to college, when you graduate. You look ahead when you're making a resume. You look ahead to the interview for the job. It's okay to look ahead and see where this might really come to a head. Where is this coming? Where is this going? Biggest supermoon of 2020 to appear on Passover. The biggest supermoon of 2020 to appear on Passover. Is it do you, is that what do you guys think about that? Do you think it's an uh, like an end days kind of thing, or is it just a supermoon? Everybody just calm down. Well, you know, I I'm a Bible believing Christian, and when Jesus was born, the night that he was born, right, the time or the few the, the few months before he was born, there was the northern star, the star that was in the heavens that the wise men saw. They saw that and they knew what it meant. They went back to the scriptures. So, the heavens declare the glory of God, the earth showeth his handiwork. God, in Genesis, said that he put the stars and the sun and the moon there for signs. They're there for signs, for messages, and not in, in and for light and these other things. The greater light to rule the day, the lesser not light to rule the night. But the stars and the heavens are for signs. Uh, message. Look, Jesus said in Matthew 24, Jesus said in Matthew 24, when you see these things begin to happen, no. That we are getting close to the end of time. We're getting there. But let may the joy of the Lord be your hope. You should be kind of ex- like, ooh, you know, worked up. Like, wow, we're getting, you know, really, you know, let's lead our lives in holiness. Let's get to holiness. Let's let's recommit to scripture, real, true, Bible believing scripture. It's where you belong, my friend. It's where you belong. It's where you belong. You belong in the gracious, good arms of Almighty God. Oh, what a dreadful and terrifying thing to end up in the hands of the living God. We have pastors like Pastor Greg Locke, which might sound familiar, might sound familiar to you, but it really doesn't matter. He's a pastor, or what do we? He calls himself a pastor. He is defying the government in his state and the sheriff's departments and the rule. He is defying the nation, really. And he is still saying, he is still holding, he is still holding church services. 
Do you remember when I told you in the a couple pod- podcasts ago? Do you remember when I told you that there was a choir in Washington that came together and now two or more people are dead? 25 people have now have coronavirus. It is not cool, pastor. It's not cool, man. What are you doing, bro? Why are you behaving this way, dude? Romans chapter 13 said that God ordained the governments. God put those governments in place. Jesus said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. What this means is what 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 this means is this. He was talking about coinage, but here, let me let me tell you one item that it it, it, it alludes to. Government. God put government in place. Remember when Caesar told him, I can get I can let you free. And he said to him, I, he said, I have the power to let you free. He's, he's, and he said, No, Caesar, I have the power to let you free. You know that, right? And he said, No. You only have the power of that which that which has been given to you by my Father who is in heaven. P- power on this earth comes from God. God ordains people. God ordains people. God chose Saul. God chose David. God chose Samuel to go and anoint these men to be king. God chose them, and he appointed them, and he appointed our government, and he appointed President Trump for such a time as these— and, you know, here's the thing. God is going to get his will. His will is still going to become, is still good, and it is still going to come to pass. Just like just like the Pharaoh of Egypt, God specifically hardened his heart so that his will could be done. So that whatever Satan means for wickedness, evil, God will mean for good. God will take it, and God will turn it over to good. For example, social media is trash. It's addiction. It's it's dopamine. It's crap. But I can use social media like I am now to cast this podcast live, a Christ-centered podcast like the Grace Rain podcast right now on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and all of these other places, Google, all of these different places. And I'm glad that you're listening to this podcast. I really am. I'm happy. Thank you for coming out and joining me today, even though I'm a little, this is a little intense. This cast is a little intense. But um, I appreciate you. I really do. I'm coming to a close. It's coming to a close. But I want to tell you, you, we can use social media to advance God's kingdom as opposed to our own, our own love, our own self-love and pleasure. I don't see any problem with sharing what you had for coffee. But I do see a problem with this self-idolatry. Oh, absolutely, I see a problem with that. But what Satan means for wickedness, his tools, God means for his will to be done. And may his will be done, not mine. What a good thing it is to be in communion with Almighty God, because he's in control. But Satan will use coronavirus, and is, to propagate his future, what he wants. Well, how do you know, Revelation? I read the Bible. I saw it. I saw it from Daniel and Ezekiel all the way to Matthew and Second Thessalonians. Matthew, Matthew 24, remember? All the way into Revelation. I see what's going on here. Are we in the last days, folks? Well, of course, naturally. This is a global thing. A global 9-11. And it's going to change the face of this planet. May God be true and every man a liar. Be holy. Be a salty people. Be salty. It's good to be salty. We are the salt of this earth. Otherwise, woe woe unto you when the world speaks well of you. So I hope I got under your skin today. How's that sound? Well, I'm going to let you go. I appreciate you listening to the Grace Rain podcast.